Good morning, City Point. We are so glad that you've joined us today. Go ahead and stand. Let's worship. You shine brighter than any star in the sky. Your light shining through the dark of the night. Jesus, forever, I find all that I am in your love, love, love. You are with me in every step that I take. Your love for me, you have called me by name. Jesus, forever, I find all that blessing over our families, over us. God, we just honor you today with our worship. We give you our heart. We give you everything that we are. And we just worship you this morning. Come on, just sing this. We're going to bless you today, church.
faithfulness, God. We cannot outrun your faithfulness. God, we just worship you. We honor you today. Come on, sing. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days have been held in your hands. From the moment that I Till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath.
Thank you, God, for what you're doing in the life of our church. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise that you deserve for what you're doing in us and through us. We just thank you, God, for your word today, that it's going to be seed in our heart and it's going to bear fruit in our lives. You're a good, good father, a good God, and you've got amazing plans for our lives. And we just thank you today, God, as we dig into your word, that, Father, we're going to lean into you. We're going to lean into your presence. We're going to hear what it is that you're speaking to our hearts today. And we just thank you, God. You open our ears to hear what you have to say. You open our eyes to see your word, to see revelation. And so we just thank you, God, for an amazing day, an awesome day at City Point Church. In your name we pray. Everyone says amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. It's going to be an amazing day. Morning, City Point. My name is Steven, and we hope you're enjoying your Sunday experience so far. If it's your first time with us, do us a quick favor and text the word welcome to 972-460-9235. This will allow our team members to connect with you, share more about our church family, and answer any questions you might have. Now, several weeks ago, we talked about our tradition of generosity here at City Point and shared our desire to help families locally, nationally, and internationally during these tough times. The tradition kicked off this this fall with our Thanksgiving Boxes of Hope campaign. We've seen a great response so far, but there's still an opportunity to be a blessing in someone's life locally this Thanksgiving. Just grab one of the Home Depot boxes from the lobby as you leave today and fill it up with some hope and some good food. The generosity continues next week as well as we begin a new partnership with the Samaritan's Purse and their program, Operation Christmas Child. Now, we are thrilled to extend God's love internationally this Christmas as we provide shoebox gifts filled with toys, school supplies, and hygiene items. Not only do we get the opportunity to deliver potentially the first ever Christmas gift to a child, but we have the opportunity to reach that child with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We'll have more details for you next week on how you and your family can participate in this awesome program. Now, with all that being said, let's join Pastor Eddie as he continues our October series, Dream Again. God's creations, each of us crafted for a purpose. We begin our journey as dreamers in a world filled with possibility. Nothing seems impossible. Along the way, we begin to settle and dreams are replaced with details. Routine takes over. We find ourselves listening to the thoughts of limitations, our purpose and desire lost in the blaring static of our lives. And still, in our deepest places, we feel a push towards something more, a sense that we were made for something greater. We yearn most for a life of significance instead of survival. Let's discover what was lost, restore what was diminished, and live out our purpose. It's time to dream again. see you here today at church and want to welcome those worshiping with us online regardless of how you're worshiping today with us we're just glad you're here um, as Stephen mentioned in the video we are doing boxes of hope and to just to let you know the cost basically to buy this list is roughly 20 to 25 dollars um, the reason we're doing it ourselves this year is organizations that we normally work with to help feed people during the holidays are not accepting donations so we want to still do something about it because we've done boxes of hope throughout the COVID process. 
And so we're asking you to buy these canned goods. Split it with another family. If you're in a small group, find another small group member. And y'all split the list even. Both of y'all bring your bags together on a Sunday. Drop them in a box. We as a church, through your generosity, what you normally give, we're buying the meat. We're buying uh, turkeys for everybody this year. Uh, The organization we worked with last year gives everybody canned hams. And and I just can't do that. I don't know what that jelly is around that ham. And I just, I can't make somebody eat that. I'm just being honest with you. So I said, let's just do a turkey uh, and bless those families. So thank you for your generosity. For those who have been new to City Point or maybe you just feel like it's your time to take that next step with us, on the 8th of November, we're going to have our connection point. Uh, it's three hours, five to eight o'clock, and it's, we go over who we are as a church, the healthy habits of a believer, and also we try to help find and discover your purpose. Um, we try to do all that, and plus we end it with a family-style meal. So we just need you to register so we can have child care and food available for you. But we'd love for you to be there uh, to be a part of, of uh, Connection Point. It'll be the last one for this year if you're wanting to, to jump in, get involved in that. Today, as you can tell, is Hot Tub Sunday. Um, I'm just kidding. It is Baptism Sunday. It's the day we baptize, and we have a good group of people getting baptized today, which I am excited about. Um, Colossians 2 says this, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. And so even if you have not registered to be baptized today, we're ready for you. We have uh, everything that you're going to need to be baptized. We have some shorts for you to wear. Um, We have a City Point t-shirt. You know, John the Baptist didn't do that, right? So we got that. Uh, We got some... You know what these are. You know how to use those. And we got some deodorant, so you smell good. So even if you didn't come ready to be baptized, we're ready for you to be baptized. All we need you to do is at the end of service, right around the offering time, I'll release the people to be baptized. Uh, You just get up and pretend you belong there. Go back there. The team will take care of you, and we'd love for you to be baptized. Even if you're watching online today, you say, man, I want to be baptized. I forgot about it. If you live close enough, hop in your car. Get here now. Um, you know, we'll be ready for you by the time you make it to church this morning. Um, I've been getting ready. I've been, I feel like a rocky thing, training for baptism uh, after my heart transplant. So I did my first push-ups uh, last night since my heart transplant. Nothing popped or blew out, so I'm ready to go. Pretty excited. Um, so it'll be a good Sunday. Hopefully I won't lose anybody. If not, to be absent from the body's present with the Lord. Amen. So um, I do want to say this, and and I just felt like last night I was just I always go to bed on Saturday nights just thinking of y'all, praying for y'all, saying, God, use me to speak to your church. That's what this is about. It's about us gathering together as a body and God ministering to us and us ministering to one another. And, and I woke up at 2.30 in the morning, and I just felt impressed just to kind of share something. I want to invite some people back to church. If, if you've been, if you've got your kids back into school, into in-person learning, and you're, they're doing their athletics, and you're going out to dinner, and you're going to birthday dinners with your friends, I want you to pray and ask God, hey, can I go back to church? And just be at peace, and just, and we want to invite you back. We've got a place for you, especially in our first service. We've got room for people to come and gather with us on Sundays. And, and I know everybody's worried about the Rona. You know, I'm 20 weeks away from a heart transplant. I take pills twice a day that suppress my immune system so my body doesn't reject my heart. And I wear a mask when I go out around everybody. I wear a mask when I worship, and I feel safe worshiping. So I just want to put that out there. I just want to invite you. Pray about it. If you feel like God says no, then stay home. But if, if he says yes, we, we got room for you. We'd love to see you again. There's just something beautiful about the body of Christ. And when, y'all, when we gather together and we're the church, there's just something that God does among us and that I'm excited about. So today, we're going to finish up our series called Dream Again. And it's been based off of Acts 2.17 that says this, And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. He says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all your sons and daughters. And I love the fact that he says your sons and daughters. He didn't say, I'm going to pour it out on the spiritually elite. I'm going to pour it out on the preachers. I'm going to pour it out on the elders or the deacons of the church. He says, on your sons and daughters, on junior and little sister, I'm going to pour out your spirit, my spirit. And he says, and they're going to do something. They're going to hear from me. That's one of the signs that, I, you know, the Spirit has been poured out on them is they're going to prophesy, and they're going to have visions, and they're going to have dreams. And this series for us is really about learning how God wants to communicate to us. This scripture is what it's about. He says, in the last days, he says, I want to communicate to my people, and not just some people, but all of my people. 
I think that a statement we, we understand to be something that we kind of look past, but, but the desire of it, the heart of it, God says, I want my people who call on my name to hear my voice. I think this reveals a need that our Heavenly Father sees for us to hear His voice. I think it reveals an understanding that He says to be led in a meaningful way. I've got to, I want to pour my spirit out. Because He could have said in the last days my people will pray more than they've ever prayed. And they'll, or, but he, he said, no, in the last days I'll talk more and I'll communicate more than I've ever done before. And so this verse is about that. In fact, I say, he says it's going to flow through you. I'm going to live on the inside of you, and I'm going to make my home in you, and I'm going to communicate about the potential of who you are and what you can be. So I took the liberty kind of rewriting this verse to maybe help us understand it in a way. Maybe if, if Acts 2.17 kind of veils it for you, let me put it to you this way. To the people that are alive near my return, when there is trouble in the world, I want to fill them with my presence so I can guide them, so that they don't feel lost, and so that they can live with purpose. Acts 2.17 says, I want to guide you so you can live to the potential that I created you to live in. So let's pray over that this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, and I just thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence that's here that helps bring enlightenment and revelation and understanding to it. And Father, this is not a dead book. This is a living book that is actively and sharp working in our lives. And we give you permission to challenge us today. We give you permission to provoke us. We give you permission to um, convict us. We give you permission to encourage us. But most of all, Father, we want to hear your voice. And I pray that we as your people would have ears tuned into your voice today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So today I want to talk about, we've talked about dreams. You know, if you missed the first two weeks, uh, I preached one. And then Brandon preached a great message on dreams. Um, last week we talked about prophecy, and then we had our encounter night that night, which was an amazing service. We put some of that service online, not the whole thing, but it was a really great time of ministry. In fact, and then Friday night we had our Lionheart men's event, which was awesome. So thanks for all the men that came out and made that night special. We had some really great chili, some bull riding. Um, you know, it was, it was awesome to watch uh, uh, people do that, and it was, it was just a lot of fun. So I was just so blessed by the men that showed up, and we had a really good time, and I think God really did some work there. I showed some pictures of my process. I even showed a video of my new heart because I figured the men don't mind that. So I, I grossed some of y'all out on Sunday, but, on, but you're men, so you can deal with it, right? So um, anyway, so today I want to talk about visions. And there's really, in Scripture, there's apparently two types of visions that we see take place. And we've labeled them. Scripture didn't label them. We as men have labeled them to help us kind of categorize what they are and what they look like. The very first one that I want to talk about just for a second is what's called an open vision. And an open vision is a vision that you have with your eyes wide open. An example of it is the author of the book of Revelation, John. We see him have this open revelation of, of God speaking to him. It's Revelation 1.10. that says, on the Lord's Day, in other words, it was church day. He says, I was in the spirit. So he was just in a God zone, you know, and he said, I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. And then he says, so he's in this place of prayer, it's, a, it's, it's church day, he's worshiping God, and he hears this voice. Verse 12, as I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, because he thought it was a person, when I turned around, I saw seven golden lampstands. So here he is having this eyes wide open experience where he turns around thinking somebody's speaking to him, and he sees in live, like in person, a vision of these seven lampstands. And that's what we call an open vision. Now, when you look throughout the scriptures, the open vision is a pretty rare vision for people to have. You don't see as many people having an open vision as the next vision I'm going to talk about. And it's not that it's impossible, it's just more rare. And it's not more important, but sometimes God communicated really essential things through open visions. And so we'll see that many times these open visions were very prophetic in their nature. The next vision, which is most common, is what we have called a closed vision. And that's kind of a vision that you kind of have in your mind's eye. It's something that, that you see. It's something, uh, something that you feel in your heart. It takes just a couple seconds, but, but God just shows you a picture of something in your future, shows you something that, that, that really is beyond your imagination that God just kind of puts in there. And really, the Spirit of God loves to give us closed visions. And he'll give those to you who are open to receiving them, to receive this picture in your mind's eye. 
Now, you'll have to learn through a process in your life of, of trial and error really how to understand that and be open to just saying, God, I want you to speak to me um, and really understand, hey, there's a difference between your imagination and an open vi- and a closed vision. But nevertheless, Scripture says God wants to talk to us this way. I remember I've had several experiences with this in my life, especially since stepping into the, uh, since we founded the church and watched God work in City Point. One of the moments I had was uh, a few years ago, before we ever moved into this building, um, I was working out. Now, normally when I go to the gym, normally when I work out, I don't listen to worship music because I, I'm not very motivated to, to work out. Like, I want to play my angry workout music, like, bah, you know, I, I want to go, I want to go hard, you know, and okay, anyway, that's just me. So normally that's what I listen to, but that day I woke up and I was just missing time with God. And I did my normal devotion, but it just kind of flooded into my workout. So I said, I'm just going to continue to listen to my worship music while I'm working out. So I'm there in the gym. I'm on the shoulder press, putting in the work to do what I'm doing. And all of a sudden, I just, I was tired, so I was taking a break. So I just shut my eyes. And in a second, I saw this auditorium. I saw the lights. I saw the chairs. I saw the color of the wall. I saw the whole thing. And God says, I'm going to open this up for you. Open this up for City Point. Now, at that point, we didn't have the people to fill it. We didn't have the money to renovate it, nor did we, were we able to do it. But I saw this picture in my head long before we ever stepped into it. And so ultimately, as we were looking for properties and looking for buildings, when I, we walked into this one, Jill and I were on the tour, and we, we looked at this place. And this room, if you didn't know what it looked like, had no sheetrock, no air condition, had a paper. They destroyed medical records here. There was a fishing boat over in that corner. There's oil stains on the floor. There was a dead rat over there. I mean, it, it did not look like the vision, but when I walked in, I was like, this, this is it. This is the place God's called us to. We can't afford it. We don't have people to fill it, and I don't know how, how we'll ever do it, but I think this is all Jesus, you know, and, and that vision inspired me to keep pushing forward on something that without that vision, I probably would have just stuck to the, the, the Excel spreadsheet and said, I don't think we can pull this off. But because of that vision, I, we were willing to take a bigger leap of faith and to believe God because we felt like this is something God is leading us into. And so, you know, that day I, I got the vision and what did I do? I went home. No, I just finished my workout because I was already there. And then I, then I went home and prayed about it a little bit more, right? So this is the important thing to understand is God gives us these visions in our life to help us understand things about our future that we wouldn't see for ourselves. Because sometimes the good things that God has for you are so good, you won't dream it for yourself, Sometimes the good things God has for you, you won't claim for yourself. You won't believe for yourself. You lower the bar. You lower your expectation because you know what you can perform. But there are moments in our life where God says, I want to perform above your expectations. You're my son. You're my daughter. I've poured my spirit out on you. I've got plans for you. I've got potential for you. And I've given you dreams, vision, and prophecy to help you walk into those things for your life. And so I want to look at a story in Acts 9 that actually records the vision of two men. And uh, this is happening in the early church. So this is Acts 9. It says, In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias, and the Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias said, Yes, Lord, he answered. And the Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask a man from Tarsus, named, ask for a man named Tarsus from, uh, named Saul, for he was praying. Now he begins to speak to Ananias in a vision, and he gives him direction. And, and, and it's really hard when you look at this, to, to understand that, that God is, is not only speaking to him, but he's about to speak to him about something that he's really uncomfortable with. This is something that Ananias would not have done on his own. And the next verse tells you why. In a vision, he has, uh, he, in a vision Paul has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. The Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man, all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. He just says, listen, God, I know you're probably talking to me right now because you desperately need my opinion. So let me give you my two cents about what you're doing right here. Um, There's a problem with your plan, all right? So this guy, probably the wrong guy. I know you made a lot of people. Uh, You probably got this one mixed up. This is not the guy you want to send me to because he's going to kill me is what's going to happen. Now, this is the power of a godly vision is it puts you in situations that you would never put yourself And what God was trying to get Ananias to do was to be a part of a miracle that that he would have never been a part of if he was just led by his own imagination. 
He says, I've heard many reports. And then verse 14, he has come here with the authority from the chief priest to arrest all that call on your name. But then the Lord pushed back, verse 15. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, go, Ananias. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles, their kings, and to the people of Israel. Then Ananias went to the house and he entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, whom appeared to you on the road as you were coming here in his vision, has sent me so that you may again be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you may be, see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So here these two men's lives intersect, both being communicated by God. Ananias steps into something that he would have never put himself into and prays for Saul. And Saul receives his side and Saul is converted and turns into Paul. Now Ananias obeyed God, what God asked of him. And what's key for us to understand is, is visions from God. When God speaks to us in dreams and visions and prophecy, or even if he speaks to us through that inner witness we talked about, or through his word, or, or just through the encouragement of a friend, he helps us push past adversity in our life. Because most of our potential is hidden by adversity. Most of our potential, most of the things that are worth fighting for, the things that one day you'll shout about, laugh about, and cry about, are hidden in adversity. For Ananias, he was the guy that got to convert Paul. But for him to convert Paul to Christianity, he had to take a risk. He had to face some adversity. He had to dial back his emotions and step into what God had told him to do. God was looking for a partner to reach Saul. He was looking for somebody who would stand on God's word alone, his voice in his life, and say, I will do it. Others may chicken out because the truth is, if Ananias chickened out, we would have never known it. God may have picked another person to do the exact same thing. But the key is, is this, is that many times when God speaks to you in a vision or a dream or prophecy or, or through just his inner witness of his voice in your life, no one knows what he's saying to you except you. But when God speaks to you about something in your life, it's because he's trying to unlock potential in your life and he's trying to help you overcome adversity. But here's a couple, three things that I want to share with you about hearing the voice of God in your life. And the very first thing is this, you have to be willing to help others. Most of the time when God speaks to you, he's not going to talk to you about how to be more selfish. He's like, you know what? You need to put in more time on the TV is what you need to do. Or, or God's not going to be like, you know what? You have not been on social media enough this week. You have not been on TikTok for six hours wasting your life away. He goes, you just really need to waste some more time. That's not typically the vision God's going to give you. Typically, the vision is, hey, there's somebody I want you to call. There's somebody I want to talk to. There's a business I want you to start. There's a ministry I want you to get involved in. There's somebody I want you to forgive. There's somebody I want you to, to ask out. There's all these things that God communicates because he says, hey, there is something better for, for you. And so many times, we, our visions for our life is a selfish vision, but God's vision for our life is an unselfish vision. So to receive words from God, wisdom from God, hear the voice of God, we have to make ourselves available to be used by God to bless and help others' lives. And sometimes it will look dramatic, and sometimes it will be simply texting somebody, hey, praying for you, hope you're having a great day. And regardless of how big or how small that, that, that voice of what God asks you to do, it is our job to simply say, hey, if you need some help in this area, God, you can count on me. Jesus put it this way, for even the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He says, if I'm the son of man, if I'm the son of God, the savior of the world came to serve people, not to be served. He says, don't set the bar so high that you think your life is just about you. If I came in this world to serve men and women, you come into this world to serve men and women. The next thing we see is that God's plan for Ananias seemed risky. Paul did not look like somebody, or Saul at that time did not look like somebody who needed converting. But only God knew how open he was. If God has a plan in there, the adversity is going to be a part of that plan. And then many times, impossibility is going to be a part of that plan. And this is where you have to be willing to trust God, even though you may spit back to God and say, God, this is why it won't work. And I remember when we looked at this building, I told you, this is why this will not work. But I remember that vision that God had given us to step into this place. And this is the next thing. You have to face adversity to experience God's opportunity for your life. And if you are unwilling to face adversity, you are never going to step into God's opportunity for your life. 
I have never found anything God has asked me to do did not challenge my faith. It, everything God has asked me to do is always, I have to dial my emotions back a little bit. They always challenge me to look for something that's not there, to, to believe for something I don't have, and to simply say, God, I, I'm willing to face this so that I can see the opportunity that you have for me. Because God's opportunities are cloaked with adversity. But if you can see past the adversity and see the opportunity, you'll live a life of miracles. I'm preaching better than y'all are staring at me. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> Romans 8.36 says this. As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered sheep to be slaughtered. He says, listen, my life is laid down for the cause of Christ. He goes, my life is to be poured out for others. The next thing is that this vision positioned him. Now, he could sit there and wait. And I think sometimes this is how we view the will of God, is we're just going to wait on the will of God, that we are unwilling to be proactive about God's plan for our life. And if your idea of God's will for your life involves you just sitting and souring and waiting, you're not going to step into God's will for your life. God, if Ananias could have said, you know what, if this is really a word from you, then Saul or Paul can get up from where he's going. If you can tell him my, if you can tell me his street address, you can tell him my street address, he can come to me. Like, I, if he wants prayer, he can come to nine, you know, 904 Summit Ridge, and he, I'll pray for him here. Like, no. God says, I'll tell you where to go. And so many times in our life, that word when he told Ananias, go, is the language of a dreamer. It's the language of a visionary. It's the language of somebody who hears the voice of God, who's willing to go pray for somebody, go forgive somebody, go ask somebody out, go drop a loan, go form a business, LLC, do whatever it is, they're willing to go. And if you want God to speak to you in dreams and in visions and prophecy and, and hear his voice, you have to have go as a part of who you are. Because if you're unwilling to go, then why would God tell you where you need to be? Why would you waste those directions on somebody who is unwilling to move? I'm convinced of this, that there are people in this room and even people online that God has spoken to you about something that you're sitting on right now. That you're like, man, I, I would like a vision, just a different one. <laughs> I would like a dream, but a different dream. He gave me one. Don't really like it. Seems like a lot of hard work. I would like the easy dream, like the win the lottery, grow my hair back dream. Like that's the one I want. All I get is the go lay down your life, believe me, you can't afford it, but I'm going to make it happen for you, trust me, part the waters, raise the debt, th those dreams. I want the easy dream, like, in, like I have a rich uncle that dies and leaves me his billion-dollar business. That's my dream, right? And so many times in our life, we have to understand that his dreams prompt us to do this, and that's the last thing of this, is step out on his leadership in your life. His voice is going to move you out of your safety place and lead you into following his voice. And anytime you're going to move closer to your God-given dream, closer to a God-given vision, closer to seeing what God fulfills by speaking to you through somebody else, you're going to have to step out on his leadership. And if we're unwilling to step out on his leadership, church, I recommend that you don't ask God to talk to you about anything. Because anytime he talks, he's going to say, follow me, trust me with this one. Let me take you somewhere you never thought of going. Now, all of this that we've talked about here today, Acts 2.17, it says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh, my sons and my daughters. All of this flows out of relationship. So even though we want to desire the gifts God has for us, relationship is the cornerstone of how we hear and operate in God's voice. In fact, I'll tell you this, if a person chooses, you know, really a person could choose to live their entire life and never have any of these things happen if they choose to never open that door to God in their life. If they never choose to allow their relationship to mature to the point when God can talk to them at a gym, or God can talk to them while they're laying in bed at night, or God can talk to them in the shower on the way to work, like what's going to happen that day, a couple days from now, you're in your vehicle driving to work, going to the job that you hate, and God says, I want you to start a business, and this is the dream that I have for you. What are you going to do with that dream in your life? And God says, basically, my voice is there to bring you into a deeper relationship. He says, I want to pour out my spirit on those who are willing to listen to me. Intimacy in relationship comes from openness in that relationship. And what God is desiring in our life is to develop, the first thing is a personal relationship with you. Develop a personal relationship with you. Listen to this. This is two different translations of the same verse. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The amazing grace of the master, Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
Another, tra- the same, different, same verse, different translation says, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This verse reveals to us that what God desires to be in our relationship is an intimate friendship. If you go all the way back to the beginning of the Bible, you look in Genesis, Scripture says that God had a habit of walking with Adam in the cool of the day. And so it's kind of like two friends meeting up at the park. Hey, you want to meet at the park at 5? Yeah, let's go for a walk. Let's talk. We haven't caught up in a while. The, uh, the picture is, is it wasn't some sort of fearful meeting. And a lot of times we view our relationship with God as some sort of fearful thing. Like you, you maybe had a cranky grandmother that always just kind of like, eh, or, or mom or dad that just kind of let you have it. And you just never know what you were doing wrong until you breathed in their presence and they yell at you about it, right? And some of us view as that's, that's our relationship with God. So we just stay away. We stay tucked in and we just be like, I just don't want to make him mad because he's God and, you know, he can turn me into a, a stain on the concrete. Like I just, I'm really afraid. But the relationship that God desires was the one that he modeled where he just says, hey, let's go for a walk. Let's talk, man. How's your marriage going? Good. We've had some trouble here. Well, you know what you should do is try doing this and see how that works. Well, how, how's finances? Well, I've been really praying about starting a business. Well, have you, have you looked for applying for a loan to, to start it off to get some capital? No, not really. Have you looked into forming that company? I didn't. No, not really. Well, you should really check into that. Just kind of see where that leads you. See, an intimate friendship with God and hearing God's voice is God's intimate friendship with us wants to release our potential because he wants to know us well enough and we know him well enough that we know what he's saying to us comes out of love. And without an intimate friendship of God, if you just have a drive-by knowledge of God, you're not going to know that what he's saying is to you is there to help you, not to hurt you. Now, my most intimate friendship I have is my wife. We've been married 27 years. We dated probably three years before that, we, were, we met in preschool. We looked that young, I know. Um, and she's my most intimate friend. So Julie will ask me sometimes, are you okay? And I'll lie. I'll say, yeah, I'm fine. And she'll say, you say, Eddie, you, you lie to your, I'm not Jesus, right? I'm maybe a pastor, but I'm not Jesus. Um, and I'll be like, yeah, I'm fine. She goes, no, you're not. And I said, well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm good. I'm good. You know, hey, you know, I, my leg could be severed. And I'd be like, I just need an ibuprofen. I'll be cool. Like, I'm good, you know. Because that's what men do. When wives ask questions, we give the one word. We're just like, yes, no, fine, good. Like, that's when you know your husband has a problem is that's all that comes out, right? But Julie loves me enough, and she's intimate enough, and she knows me well enough to, to, to work me through that issue and come back, circle back around when I'm ready to talk and, and help me with stuff. And that intimate friendship is what God is looking for in our life, to simply have somebody who knows you well enough to say, hey, I know you're not ready to go here right now, but I also know it's not good that that's in you, and I want to help you with it. So the very first thing we have to understand about hearing God's voice in our life is to develop a personal relationship with him. If we pursue God through the lens of friendship, it changes how we experience our relationship with him and look at him that way. The second thing is this personal relationship then allows us to live a new life. Our personal relationship allows us to live a new life. Listen to Galatians 5. It says, but whenever someone turns to the Lord, a veil is taken away. So that means we can see more clearly. For the Lord is a spirit, and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, he says there is freedom. So wherever God is, freedom follows him. So all of us who have had this veil removed, which is those who believe in Jesus, can see and reflect the glory of the Lord, the Lord who is the spirit, who makes us more and more like him as we're changed into his glorious image. He says what happens with your relationship with God, he says, is it's a gradual process. The more you're with him, the more you think like him and the more you talk to him. All of us have gotten into something because our friends have gotten into it. All of us have started a hobby because everybody else was and you didn't want to stay at home on Saturday. So you're just like, yeah, I'll get into it, what I need to buy, you know, and you're not into it. You just like them. All of us have gone to movies with our wives simply because we love our wife and we could really care less about the movie, right? I mean, wives, I don't know if y'all know that, but sometimes men lie and say they like the movie, okay? So that's back when we had movies. Y'all remember movies before COVID? You remember that? Like you'd eat popcorn and see a thing on a screen that had actors in it? Anyway, um, that's back good old days, like dinosaur days. So we've all, those intimate friendships change you. And what we understand about our relationship with God and where the new life comes from and where the freedom comes from is slowly we begin to see him more clearly. And when we see God more clearly, Scripture says, then you can see yourself more clearly. In other words, there's things right now that are bondage to you. There's emotions that you have that are destroying you that you don't see about yourself. 
But the closer you get to God, the more clearly you see those things in your life because you can't be around freedom and walk around in bondage. And so what happens as you get closer to him, all of a sudden that attitude that you've carried around since your childhood that's destroyed friendships and run business deals, all of a sudden you walk in one day and you're like, wow, I've been a real jerk in this area of my life. And God's like, yeah, yeah, tell me about it. Like, I know. <laughs> well, I need to change that. Well, good, I'm here to help you change that. I'm, I'm freedom. I myself am freedom. So the closer you get to him, the more clearly you see yourself. And the, and the last thing is this is relationship, this is the importance of it, is determines really who leads your life. Romans 8.1, there's no condemnation for those who belong to Christ. So we're not talking about God's guilting you into this. Instead, there's something else. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Before his voice leads us anywhere, God's voice is going to lead us closer to freedom. Galatians 5 says this, uh, so I say the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit guide your life so you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Now this verse has a lot of power in it. And I think sometimes we ignore the power of this verse. What he's simply saying is by being in the right place in your life, you'll do the less wrong things in your life. So in other words, like a lot of us have been sent home to work, right? And you never realize how much food you could eat in a day until you were sent home to work, right? Like all of a sudden, I usually would just eat breakfast and lunch, but all of a sudden there's this time between breakfast and lunch when you just feel like, I need to eat again. And then you, so you eat, and then you eat your lunch, and then there's a time between lunch and dinner, or maybe two or three times, that you're just like, I probably should eat again. Why? Because you have the time to do it at work. People would look at you like, why are you getting another bag of chips, brother? Like, but at home, it's like, I'm getting another bag of chips, and ain't nobody going to stop me. They can't see the bag on my Zoom meeting. I'll be like, you know, mute the mic and just crunch away on my Cheetos, right? Why? Because you have time. What, what Scripture says here is that when we're with the Holy Spirit and you're doing the things that you should do, you're basically going to have less opportunity to do the things you shouldn't do. If you have more, if you're more in God's presence and you're walking in his peace, when somebody says something to you, you're not going to be so easily offended because you're going to be walking in love at that point because you're walking with the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we think it's like, well, I don't, I must not be close to God because I still have these issues in my life. It's not a matter of it instantly changes. It's just a matter of influencing your life. And the more we become aware of him and the deeper that relationship gets, the less power and less opportunity we have to live in those ways. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. The Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what our sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you're not free to carry out the good intention. But then he gives us hope. He says, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross, to his cross and crucified them there. And since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Acts 2.17 is simply God saying, I want to lead. I want to lead you through dreams. I want to lead you through visions. And I want to lead you through prophecy. It's just another way for me to speak into your life. Because the truth is about our spiritual journey is this. Our relationship with God is not the absence of fleshly influences. But it's just an awareness of them. There's going to be something on the inside of you till the day that you die that will want to lead you off that trail. But the longer you walk with him, the less power that influence has because the less time it has to influence you. That's God's desire. And so I want to encourage you, as we, we're walking away from this series, we're going to step into a series called The Table, which I think you'll really enjoy, that I want to encourage you that God's voice is about releasing your potential. Nobody knows their potential in this room except God himself. And if you've never allowed God to release the potential in you, you're missing the best part of your Christian walk is allowing God to speak to you and lead you into new realms of freedom. So let me pray for you. In fact, with every, head, uh, every eye closed and head bowed, in this room, just if you want to hear God's voice more clearly than, than ever before in your life, just extend a hand to heaven. Just, you can just open it right there in your lap and just say, God, I, Father, I come to, we come to you right now. And I thank you for the people that are in this room. and God, we're here today because we want to hear your voice. I pray for those in this room today that, Father, have a desire to know you like they've never known you before. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to speak to us and to challenge our ideas and to shape us and to renew us. 
God, I pray for dreams and visions and the gift of prophecy in this church. And Father, I pray that we write these things down and mark them on a wall so that one day when we're walking into it, God, we can recall how you told us about it long before it ever happened. I pray for those broken hearts in this room, those with broken vision because of life, God, that you would restore to them the ability to dream again. Restore to them the ability to see what you have for them again. Father, we need you. And we just surrender to your presence and your leadership in our life. Father, we choose right now to stop resisting you. And we simply say yes to you and yes to your leadership right now. In Jesus' name. With every head bowed, every eye closed, if you are here today and you do not have a personal relationship with God or your relationship isn't where it should be, maybe that's you online today. You, you don't have that relationship with God, but you desire to have one. I'm going to pray a prayer with everybody in this room. But if you say, hey, Eddie, I want that kind of relationship. I want that intimate friendship with God. I know I don't have it, but I want it. Would you include me in that prayer that you're about to pray? If that's you, can you raise your hand in this room real quick so I can see who I'm praying with today? Thank you. Others, you say, that's me. Include me in that prayer, please. I want that intimate friendship with God. Amen. 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 That's awesome. Let's all pray with those that, that raised their hands today. Let's say this prayer together. Everybody say, Heavenly Father, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. And I choose to follow you with all of my heart from this day forward. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's give God praise for those that made that decision today. That's awesome. Uh, if you made that decision, you're here in this room. Uh, there's a next step card in the back of all of our seats. There's a instructions for a new decision. You text the word, number 972-460-9235. Follow those instructions. We simply want to celebrate the decision that you made. We're not here to embarrass you or, or make that known publicly. We just want to celebrate you. And in fact, if that decision was made today and you have not been water baptized, we would love for you just to be a part of our water baptism. Don't postpone. Trust me, you're really not guaranteed tomorrow. And so you got to take advantage of the day that you're in. Um, at this point, what I want to do is release those who are getting baptized. You can go ahead and leave. I'm going to receive our offering for just a second. Um, as you know, a couple weeks ago, we talked about heart for the house and, and receiving an offering for that. It's something that we started pre-COVID, and actually it was either the Sunday or the Sunday, the next Sunday we did not have in-person services is when we're supposed to receive that offering. And so we presented this to you about eight weeks ago, 10 weeks ago now, uh, and we were uh, to raise money. And so y'all gave a total of $33,000, so praise God for that. And that definitely helps us towards our projects of replacing the mics and our online services so thank you for your generosity um there's always you know god can always we can always use more and so i really appreciate your generosity and the seed that you've sown and i really pray for those who sowed seed that god would give you a harvest off of that and so right now we're just going to receive our normal tithe and offering uh proverbs 3 9 says this honor the lord with your wealth with the best part of everything you produce and so this is our opportunity to worship god with what he blessed us with whether you're in person or uh online we worship because it's God's house, and this is what Scripture asks us to do, is to honor God with the first part of our increase, what He blessed us with. And so let me pray over our giving. You can do it online or via text or in person or offering boxes on both sides of the sound booth or in the hall. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, and I just thank you for this opportunity to give. We worship you with what you blessed us with, God, and I just thank you for more than enough, Lord, to do what you've called us to do, God. I thank you for those who sow. That, Father, that you'll multiply what remains in their hands. And I pray that's what's given to the hands of this church. You'll multiply it. And we give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Will you guys stay steady? We'll be back in just a couple minutes for our first water baptism in a long time. I can't wait to be part of it. Well, what's up, everyone? My name is Crystal, and I am super excited that it is Baptism Sunday. Whether you are online or you're here in person, we hope that you enjoyed the service today. But service is not over, so please um, be a part of our baptisms um, and celebrating what's going to take place here in just a moment. I want to remind you, if you made a decision, please text the word decision to the number you see on your screen or behind me. 
we have some team members who would love to reach out to you uh, and celebrate with you and then also send you a little bit of information uh, to help you in your new relationship with God. Also, if this is your first time being in service today, don't forget to stop by our next steps area in the lobby. Uh, we have someone back there who would love to meet you on our behalf and give you a gift just to let you know how much we appreciate you being with us today. Well, you guys may know we have an amazing point team full of people who have decided to dedicate their time, dedicate their gifts and their talents to serving here at City Point. And it is Point Team Recognition Sunday. So y'all make some noise for that. Come on. So we're going to take just a couple of moments to recognize some of our awesome team members. So I want y'all to make the most noise you can possibly make when I announce these people and what they say. And if you're watching online, just go ahead and throw some claps and whatever you want to. I want to see where I'm going to go back and look and see if you did it too. So our first person, Mike DeBusk. He serves. There you go. There you go. He serves on our parking team, and he also serves in Club 56. And this is what Mike says about serving. He says, I love giving back to City Point by serving. This is a great way to meet new people while helping the church. So give it up for him again. Thank you, Mike, for all that you do. We cannot do it without you. And then our next person is Jermaine Brown. Give it up for him. He serves on our parking team. And so this is what he says about serving. He says, I love serving in the parking team because I get to set the first impression by welcoming people to City Point and I love the fellowship with people that I meet in the parking lot. So come on, make some noise for Jermaine. We appreciate you, we honor you, and thank you for all that you are doing. And let me encourage everyone who's here in person and online, those who are gonna be coming back with us soon. If you have not signed up, to serve in any area here, you can sign up at the info desk on the point team. We have so many different areas. And if you say, you know what, I don't know where I can serve, then Pastor Eddie mentioned Connection Point. That's one of the main things it's about is to let you know how you can get involved uh, in our church. So please don't sit on that. I'm telling you, you want to do it. It's going to not only enhance you as a person, serving others does that, but it's also going to raise the quality of the experience that you feel connected to uh, at, at City Point because you're going to be able to make relationships and build friends uh, through, through your serving. So with that said, it's almost time for baptism. I believe the band's going to sing a song, and then we're going to celebrate. Yeah. Hey, we're just going to worship uh, the song here before baptism begins. If you'd like to stand and worship, you can. Uh, with us, we just invite you to. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You give a life. You are love. You bring a light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore your free heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out. So we pour 
baptized today and to see people to be baptized. The church was intended to be a lighthouse in dark times. The church was not intended to shut down during the storm, but the church was meant to shine even brighter to guide people to truth and freedom during days like that we live in. And so with the sheer fact that we have people willing to take their next step in Christ and water baptism during our 100 year pandemic is an amazing thing to me. It's a testimony of the power of God to change lives. And so at this point, I'd like to begin the, the process. So, I'll All you. right. So first up, we have Lyndon Cotham. Lyndon, where are you at? Are you in here? Yes, there you are. Woo! Come on, Lyndon. There you go, buddy. your arms and hold your nose. Father, I thank you for his decision to be a follower of Christ. Now, baptizing now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'll wear one so you don't have to. I think that'd be a form of waterboarding if we did it that way. So. <laughs> there you go. You can turn around and face that way. Cross your arms and hold your nose. Father, I thank you for her decision to follow you in water baptism. And I baptize her now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So awesome. All right, next we have David Nyman. Let's go, David. Cross your arms, hold your notes. 
Father, I thank you for David's decision to follow you. As a follower of Christ, I'm baptizing now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good. Next I haven't week, lost one yet. Go ahead. We have Savannah Newman. Savannah. Woo. That, that needs some help over the, over the wall. There you go. All right. You're halfway there. All right. So just hold your nose. Cross your arms. Hold your nose. Father, I thank you for her decision to become a follower of Christ. And I baptize her now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right, next we have Rochelle Sproul. Rochelle. Come on, Michelle. Hold your, cross your arms, hold your nose. Father, I thank you for her decision to follow you. Because of that decision, now I baptize her now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Sean Williams. Own your glasses. You'll regret that. <laughs> All right. Come on in. There you go. Face that way. Perfect. All right. Cross your hands. I'll hold your nose. Father, I thank you for his decision to follow you, and I baptize him now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Next we have Latay Jordan. decision. I baptize him now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Awesome. Amen. 
Amen. Well, thank you for being a part of our water baptism. I think yep. somebody, yep. Chris was going to come up in just a second, but I want to encourage you uh, as the church that we are the light. And don't be afraid to shine bright. There's somebody in your life right now that next time we do this should be in this tank. And I encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity just to share the love of God, invite them to church, and let Jesus transform their lives. So, amen. Y'all have a blessed week. Awesome. Come on. Let's, let's give another hand for the people who got baptized. Yeah. It is absolutely one of my favorite things that we do here. Well, if you're here in person, you can go ahead and stand. I don't have much to say. Just want to remind you about Boxes of Hope. If you're here in person, you'll have to actually see that on your seat. Take that card, as Stephen said on the video, and then return your box that you can get out in the lobby November 15th. And, and then also online, you can go to uh, citypointchurch.com, and then you can find out what all the groceries are and all of those things as well. So uh, also, if I could have the prayer team come up. Here we believe in the power of prayer, so I want to encourage you, if you have anything that you need prayer for this week or in the days ahead, please come down. Uh, they're mopping up the floor right here, but our prayer team will be over here, and we'd love to pray with you and then believe God with you and celebrate what he's going to do. So don't hesitate to come get prayer. And with that said, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you did in us today. God, I thank you for the word that was preached. I thank you that this week that it's going to bear fruit in our lives, God. We're going to see it being applied, that you're going to show us visions, God. You're going to show us the things that you want us to do in our life. And I pray that every person in here uh, today and everyone watching online, that this week would be a mark of us growing closer to you, Jesus, and that we would hear your voice to lead us and to guide us. I pray that you would give us wisdom, God. I pray that you continue to protect us uh, in our bodies, God, our, our families. Uh, and I thank you for all that you're doing through us in this community. I thank you that even though COVID is, has put a damper on what we can do in our world, but I thank you that uh, City Point is going to be a light, that this holiday season, we're going to be able to be a blessing to so many people. And I thank you for what you did uh, in all of these people's lives as they begin to be baptized to show publicly what you're doing in them internally. So we love you, God, and we thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. We will see you next Sunday.